This is video three on our series on logic using Venn diagrams. We're going to discuss some logic today. Okay, premise number one, some dogs have tails. Premise number two, some dogs are yellow. And the conclusion, some yellow dogs have tails. Now, draw a Venn diagram to represent these premises and discuss the logic. Think about the logic of this first. Is this valid and is this sound? After completing that, resume the video. So hit pause right now and go ahead and solve this one, this logic question. Draw a Venn diagram, determine if it's valid and it's sound in your mind, and then we'll discuss it. And as a quick review, valid means the logic works. It means assuming the premises, the conclusion will follow. Sound means that the argument is valid and the premises are also true. Okay, assuming you've actually solved this on your own, now we're going to discuss it. <clears throat> First for a moment, let's Draw a Venn diagram just for some dogs have tails. So I have a circle for dogs and a circle for animals that have tails. And in this case, my universe might be all animals. And what we are asserting when we know some dogs have tails is this center part must exist. We're sure it exists. We're in all honesty not so sure about this. Whether or not there's some other animals with tails other than dogs, we don't know. And whether or not there are dogs over here that uh, don't have tails, we don't know. We just know for sure there are some dogs that have tails. So when I try and add in the circle for yellow, here's the dilemma I run into. We have some dogs have tails, so we know this exists, and we know some dogs are yellow, but I don't know where to put the yellow circle. I have choice number one over here. So ignoring this yellow circle, I could put yellow over here and it would meet both of my premises. Some dogs have tails, this part exists. Some dogs are yellow, this part exists. And you could see clearly that we don't know for sure that any yellow dogs have tails there. We would, in fact, if this picture would be saying, no, no yellow dogs have tails. And no yellow animals have tails, in fact. But yellow could equally logically concur with those two premises and be over here. And we have some dogs that have tails, some dogs that are yellow. And in this case, we do have yellow dogs with tails that meet all three. We do not know which of those circles is going to be correct. But if you look at the, the question, we had the two premises, some dogs have tails, some dogs are yellow, and the conclusion, some yellow dogs have tails. We have to know that for certainty to be sure of this. So looking at the picture with the two possibilities, could be over here, could be there, we do not know for certain. It's, it's possible, but we can't be sure, so we have to say not valid. An argument is only valid when you're absolutely sure, 100% of the conclusion. Possible isn't good enough, it has to be sure. And we're definitely not sure. It could be this world here where the yellow dogs don't intersect the tails. Okay. <clears throat> On to our next Venn diagram. Premise one, all fish breathe water. Premise two, all mammals have fur. Premise three, no furry animals breathe water. Premise four, squirrels are mammals. And the conclusion is the squirrel could possibly breathe water. So it, the conclusion says it's possible. Is it possible that a squirrel could breathe water? Okay, and we have to take our real-world knowledge out. We're going to work simply from the logic and what's given to us in four premises. So once again, stop the video, draw your best Venn diagram, and try and answer the two questions. Is this valid and is it sound? Then resume the video when you're reasonably sure of your, of your answer, and then we'll go over them together. Okay, assuming you've, you've already solved it, here we, we go and we'll have the answer. Now the first thing to note, we have four premises, and we're going to have to organize a lot of different things. All fish breathe water. From previous work, we know when there's all of something, one is inside the other. So fish are inside the water breathers. So animals that breathe water. All mammals have fur is likewise going to put the group of mammals inside furry animals. So those two relationships are going to hold up. Now we look at the third one. No furry animals breathe water. And this, by luck, I've drawn furry animals and water breathing separate. We wouldn't know that until this point. Could have been intersecting, could have been all kinds of, you know, could have crossed over and been inside each other for all we knew at this point. But the overriding one we're going to have to kind of start with is right here. No furry animals breathe water. And when there's not one of anything doing the same thing, we draw two separate circles. So furry animals and animals that breathe water don't intersect. There's none in the in the joint group. Now putting in the other things we mentioned, fish breathe water, mammals are furry, so they're contained inside their two things. And the squirrel, we were told, is a mammal. So I use an X to mark the spot where the squirrel are inside mammals, inside furry animals, which are clearly separated from breathing water. 
a squirrel could breathe air? Well, obviously a typo there. Could a squirrel breathe water? And no, it could not. It's not valid and not sound that it could. So in this case, we've proven for sure that it is impossible for this squirrel to ever breathe water. And since it can't breathe water, the conclusion does not fall from the conclusions. There is no possibility of it, of it doing what we were asked. So it's not a valid argument. It's not sound. And now we're going to examine if-then logic with Venn diagrams. <clears throat> so this is getting a little bit closer to the real world. If a child behaves well, he or she gets to go to Chuck and Cheese. Premise two, Johnny didn't behave well. In fact, he was a complete brat. So conclusion, Johnny did not go to Chuck and Cheese. You see this logic used all the time, and it's used incorrectly a lot of the time. Is this valid or sound logic? Well, if then ones can be done on a Venn diagram. If and then is the same as all of something does something. So what we're going to rewrite is, if a child behaves well, he gets to go to Chuck and Cheese, is the same thing logically as saying all children who behave well get to go to Chuck and Cheese. So if he's among those children who behave well, he gets to go. Children who behave well, children who go to Chuck and Cheese. And to finally answer the question, what about Johnny? What were we told about Johnny? Okay, we know if he behaves well, he gets to go to Chuck and Cheese. Johnny didn't behave well, he was a brat. So he's not inside behaving well. Well, not inside behaving well means you're outside of this little circle. But you could be outside of it two different ways. And that's why I have a question mark here. You could be outside of it while still being inside the group that go to Chuck and Cheese or while being outside. So you cannot conclude just because he didn't behave well, he didn't get to go to Chuck and Cheese. All you know is that if he behaved well, he did go. You don't know what happens when he doesn't behave well, when that if condition isn't met. So the logic is invalid and unsound. Unsound. Another real-world example, this one I saw on a television debate during the campaigns. A says, one thing is for sure, all the racist people are going to vote for John McCain. B responds, hey, I'm voting for McCain. You're calling me a racist. I resent that, Mr. A. Is B correct logically? Can we identify the premises and draw a Venn diagram to examine the logic? Once again, stop the video, work this on your own, and then we'll work it together. Okay, back to our solution. All the racists will vote for McCain. That was one premise. Premise two, by his own admission, Mr. B is voting for McCain. Conclusion, Mr. B is a racist. Well, is that really a logical conclusion? All the racists vote for McCain. So the racists are inside here. Okay, well, let's see what happens. Mr. B is voting for McCain. We know he's inside the large circle, but we have no way of knowing inside the small circle or not. All you know is he's inside the large circle. So that by no means is saying he's a racist whatsoever. So it was really poor logic of Mr. B to even take offense to that. And th that was actually on a televised debate during the pre prelude to the elections. I saw that logic misused by one of the debaters in the debate. 